Isabel, what vocal mic should I buy? This has got to be the most common question I'm asked by my students and podcast listeners, hands down. And I get it. Investing in a mic can feel like a big deal. There's so many options to choose from now and everyone you ask will give you a different recommendation. What's a girl to do? And that's why I've created a quick, easy 45 second quiz where you'll be matched with your perfect vocal mic. You'll tell me about your voice, your setup, your needs and your budget. And I'll pair you with a vocal mic that's your perfect fit. No more trawling through the internet, scrolling through thousands of online reviews and losing all sense of time and space. And did I mention you'll even receive a free bonus video I recorded in my very own home studio showing you how to position your mic for your best sounding recordings yet. Just go to femalediymusician.com forward slash quiz to take the quiz and get your hands on all of this. That's femalediymusician.com forward slash quiz and get ready to meet your perfect vocal mic. This is about you stepping into being an independent DIY female musician imperfectly, just getting things started, learning as you go. And that really is the reality of what that means. So anyone that would ever make you feel patronised or overlooked or even humiliated for not knowing everything but giving things a go and getting started... They really don't understand the creative process well enough and they don't understand the recording process well enough and they should not be your barometer of whether this is worth doing or not. Hello and welcome to Girls Twiddling Knobs. My name's Isabel and over the last decade, my self-produced and self-released music has amassed over 25 million Spotify streams. I also have a PhD in sonic arts, but I wasn't always this confident with music tech. In fact, I still hear those self-doubt gremlins in my head from time to time. I started this podcast to help more female-identifying musicians start recording and producing their music and learn from other women making music with technology. If that's your cup of tea, then you're in the right place, my friend. Let's dive in. Welcome back and this is our third episode to go live on launch day for Girls Twiddling Knobs. Um, In this third episode I'm going to be talking all about why you should never try and get this whole recording thing right or dare I say it perfect. So we're going to be getting into all of that what the hell I mean in this whole episode and I think you're going to find it so useful if perfectionism has been sabotaging your ability to move up forward or even give recording a, a try. Um, before we dive in though I want to just make sure that if you're listening while this goes out on the 26th of November or if you're listening before the 30th of November you could win a £50 gift voucher to spend on any recording equipment you like And what you have to do to enter is rate and review the podcast and then take a screenshot and share that on social media, either Facebook or Instagram and tag on Instagram. It's just at femdiymusician and on Facebook, it's just at and then type in the female DIY musician. And when you do that, you are going to be entered into win that £50 voucher. So that will be really, really fun for you if you win, obviously. But also it really helps the podcast get in front of as many women in music as possible. So let's get into what we're going to talk about today. So today I'm going to be talking about some really key recording and production misconceptions. And these things could be understandably holding you back. I'm also going to break down why this could be particularly harmful to female identifying musicians. And then why these misconceptions even exist. And then crucially, how this could affect the recording process and even our output as musicians. But then I'm going to share with you a better way so that you can bring this into when you are either learning from scratch how to record and produce. Or if you're already recording and producing your music, you can just feel more confidence and have maybe just a, a fresh perspective on what you're doing. Okay, so let's get into this. So recording and production misconceptions... Just listen to these and see if any of these ring true for you. So these are some of the sentences or narratives we might have about recording and production. So there is a right and a wrong way to do things. There's always going to be a right or a wrong way that you can record or produce something, that there are just these inside knowledge or these inside secrets of the right and the wrong way to do something. Another misconception could be some people just get music tech. 
some people were, you know, pushed out the womb and for whatever reason their brain is wired up so they just get music tech and there's other people who just don't get music tech and they never will. That's another misconception. How about this one? You're either a professional or an amateur. There's no grey area. It's just that if you know all this stuff, if you have all the inside knowledge, you're a professional. And if you don't, you're an amateur and everyone will know you're an amateur. That's another misconception. This is a good one. So you need to know everything to be worthy of respect in the studio. How many people listening to this, maybe you're listening and you're nodding your head when you're thinking about times you've gone into the studio to maybe even record your music and you feel like you don't have the right to share your opinion because you don't know everything about recording and therefore your opinion is not as important. Um, And then the last one, don't ever ever show anyone your imperfections in the studio so this can affect I mean everyone like not just women it affects men too and we'll talk about that a little bit more um, in a minute but this is a big big misconception that you should never show any weakness you should never show any flaws or imperfections you should certainly never reveal that you don't know how to do even the tiniest thing because immediately your validity and your legitimacy in the studio just gets weakened and eradicated I know that sounds pretty full on, but actually (laughs) those kinds of misconceptions and those narratives, they go on in in our heads all the time. And it may be even that we're not, we're we're a bit ashamed to admit it to other people, but actually this is really prevalent, not just amongst women, but amongst men as well. And these misconceptions are deeply problematic for everyone. They're problematic for women, but they're problematic for men. I know men. There's plenty of men who find this tedious at at best, that it's just exhausting and boring, that you're always supposed to know everything, that you can't reveal your flaws, that there's a perfect way and an imperfect way, a professional way and an amateur way. I know lots of men that find that tedious and boring and don't believe that. And I also know men that find this anxiety provoking, that it makes them not like spending time in music tech environments because they just don't fit that mould. They just do not think or feel like that about music technology because to them it's creative. And and to them, they're not perfect and they are flawed. And of course, we all are, we're all human. But I think that this is particularly difficult for women because for women, we often don't have many online or in-person teaching experiences where there's many of us in the room, let alone many of us actually leading the space and holding that space so it means that also lots of women don't have many friends growing up who even play an instrument still I mean this is a big generalization I know but still you know when you're growing up it's much more likely your male friends will play the guitar still than than your female friends although less likely than when I was growing up Um, let alone have a collection of synths or a couple of decks or some recording gear. So as women, we have less initial exposure to it when we're in our teenagehood as well. And also as women, we don't see ourselves in most live performing situations, studio sessions or sound design who are like us and using music technology. It's really still quite rare, even though it is getting better. But this means that a lot of these misconceptions that I just shared in the the start of this podcast can really start to to become heavy and start to plague us as women because we feel like, because we seem to be the only person who looks like us and maybe hasn't had the same exposure to music tech or there's not the same presumptions that we'll be good at it, it means that these misconceptions, these narratives feel really, really true and also feel really binding Like, we need to listen to them, otherwise we're going to fuck up. We're going to show that we are amateur if we don't know everything or we don't know the right way to do something. And the thing about women, and, you know, lots of guys too, but the thing about women is that the very things that we're told make us less naturally, um, you know attracted to or good at music technology are actually the very things that are going to set us apart and also even make the best music in the studio whether that's at home or in a professional studio and these things are that we're really good at bringing emotion we're really good at bringing intuition and we're really good 
at profiling and going after that creativity in our music. And often we don't realise that these are vital skills for recording and production too. And the the guys I told you about that I have talked to who really get sick of these narratives as well and they don't like them either, they're usually quite emotional, intuitive and creative people and they have these skills that set their music apart as well. And actually these are skills that should be taught in music production classes and they should be taught in engineering courses and if you have a good tutor they are but a lot of the time they're not um, which is a real great shame but so why do these misconceptions exist why don't we teach more about emotion and intuition and creativity when it comes to music technology well could it be because we have high standards we want there to be a right and a wrong way of doing things because we have high standards for music technology things need to be right and, you know, in lots of ways, you can understand that argument. It could also be that we feel like there should be industry standards, that there's a certain level where we become professional, where when we do certain things in a certain way with recording and production, it hits an industry standard that means it is ready to be shared and compared on a, a professional platform. Fair enough in lots of ways. But I think there's also beneath this a fear. I think behind these misconceptions there's a fear and a desire to control that there's a desire that things do have a right and a wrong place that there is some kind of visible line where something becomes professional rather than amateur that there's a safety and reason and order rather than actually lean into the complexity and the unpredictability and the creativity and the openness that truly actually exists whenever we're working with anything expressive, creative and human. And I think there's a lot to be reflected on there and a lot that as an industry we should reflect on and that is that there has been more reflection on this bit by bit. But as singular individuals in the industry and especially as women in the industry, we really need to reflect on this. Please don't just buy into these misconceptions. Really start reflecting on them and critiquing them so that you really understand why you might be doubting yourself and holding yourself back and believing certain things about yourself or not believing certain things about yourself. So is this actually, are these narratives actually about a desire to control a process that is actually far more complex and far more individual than we'd like to let on because that makes it messy and that makes it unpredictable. And where there's messiness and unpredictability, we lose control and that can be scary. So yes, while I think we should all strive for high standards, and yes, I think it's good that there are certain industry standards that mean we know that we are putting work out that's going to be playing a, a bigger game for us and our music. That's great. But we've also then got to hold at the same time the reality that this is a, a process that we cannot predict, that we cannot control quite as much as these misconceptions may have us believe. And actually, that emotion, that intuition, that creativity, that is golden and you should never let go of that. So how might these misconceptions affect our recording process and output? Well, there's two scenarios that I'm going to share with you. One's the studio and one is in our own recording space. And in the studio, we're likely going to be working with other people, even if it's just one other person. On our own, in our own turf, that's likely going to be by ourselves. So in the studio, this these misconceptions may lead us to not share our ideas. If we really believe that unless we know everything about recording and production, our, our opinion doesn't count, then we're less likely to share our ideas. It could be that we don't reach out when we're struggling with something. Maybe we want to understand something better. Maybe we want to know how to do something. Or maybe we just want to learn a whole bunch of new skills and you want to make the most of that time. If you don't feel like you can reveal your flaws and your weaknesses and the fact that you don't know everything, then you're less likely to reach out. It could also mean that we overlook our strengths. It could mean that because we, th we know that we don't know certain things that we believe are most important to the process of recording and production, we overlook the other things we bring that could be just as important. And it could also mean that we overestimate our weaknesses. We give far more space to, in our head, chatting around about all the things we're not good at rather than seeing that those are just part of the picture. And the, what this can lead to is not feeling ownership of the process. I mean, how many people do you know, or maybe you're listening right now, 
and you have had that experience of going into the studio not feeling comfortable sharing your ideas not feeling comfortable being actually involved in the process and then by the end of it you don't feel like you've had any ownership in it even though it's your music and that can even lead to feeling resentful ashamed even disappointed by the actual output you may even listen to those recordings years later and maybe even cringe with disappointment or shame because you know that you you just did not feel comfortable sharing your ideas and it needed to be different but you didn't know how to say that or share that so that's how it can play out in the studio how about on our own then well on our own this can look very similar to in the studio but there's some other layers to it so It means that when we start trying to record and produce stuff at home on our own, we can give up as soon as something feels difficult. And I promise you, many things are going to feel difficult right at the beginning. And even when you become more and more experienced, things will still feel difficult. But if you doubt yourself because of these misconceptions, these narratives that we've been talking about in this episode, you'll give up much sooner. And it will mean that you don't go to the other side where you start to see all those wonderful rewards of just sticking in with it and if you haven't listened to episode one where I talk about my own journey with recording and production listen to that because I talk about the how I learned the hard way to to really stick through and come out the other side it also means that we can draw very black and white conclusions and what I mean by this is let's say something doesn't work first time And the black and white conclusion we draw is, well, I'm obviously just not one of these people who's good with technology and I never will be. And that's a very, very, very limiting thing to say to ourselves. I mean, that is putting a big black full stop on that on that scenario. And in reality, actually, if we'd just given ourselves a few tries and taken the pressure off and and also known that we'll never get it perfect, we'll never get it right necessarily, whatever that means, that it's not necessarily about us not being good with music technology full stop. It's just maybe we're not naturally um, drawn to it or naturally, you know, picking it up immediately. But it doesn't mean we never will. And it doesn't mean that we never will to the extent that we need to so that we can get our ideas recorded at least as demos, if not more. And then that can also be, we can also have an all or nothing attitude. So we can have this idea that, well, unless I can record, you know, 16 channels with MIDI and drums and bass and, uh, you know, five backing vocal parts, etc., etc., unless I can do everything that's in my head right now, then it's not worth it. There's just so much, so much to learn and it's not worth it. And this all or nothing attitude is basically giving ourselves an automatum and it's not fair. And really what we should allow ourselves to do is to gradually build up our skills and gradually build up our techniques and tools so that we will eventually be able to get to that point where we can realise all the ideas in our head or near enough um, because none of us ever really get to that point. I hate to break it to you. Um, There's always some little blind spots and that's the beauty of it. But this all or nothing attitude gives us this automatum of, well, unless I can do this, it's not worth it. Unless I can do everything that I hear in my head, it's not worth learning, you know, even the basics. And that's just not true because what it does is it keeps ourselves small. It stops us learning new skills and it stops us getting to that other side. And our music is never heard or at least it's only heard if we manage to scramble together free time with somebody else or a bunch of money to record in a studio, which, while I'm not totally against, is certainly not the only option I'd want to rely on. So, you know, this can mean that we don't release or share our music and we remain another hidden woman in music. So what do we do about this? What is a better way of approaching production and recording approaching learning these skills well I would start with the phrase tools not rules anytime you learn a technique or a tool for recording and producing your music just remember that phrase these are tools they are not rules there are very few things that you will learn to do with expressing your ideas and your art form and your feelings and your music that are black and white hard and fast rules You have a toolbox and you can use it and sometimes certain tools will work wonderfully and sometimes they just won't be right and they just won't land for whatever reason. So that's the first thing. Approach your recording as if you're using tools but not rules. The other thing is be aware of fear. 
be aware when you're doubting yourself and be aware that this is doubt, not necessarily truth. And that this is you doubting where you're at right now, whereas what you could become if you just let yourself push through and, and persevere with learning new skills and recording and technology. The other thing is being open to mistakes. You've got to be open to making mistakes because you'll make so many mistakes. That's okay. It's part of the process. You will make mistakes and some of those mistakes will become beautiful creations that you are so happy happened and you, you know, you can't imagine a, a, a world where that they're not part of your recording. So making mistakes is actually part of the process and really important. The other thing is very related, but believing in the creativity of imperfections. Imperfections are what give your music uniqueness. They give your music personality. Imperfections are actually what we're striving for. And also having the courage to do it anyway, even if you make mistakes, even if you're imperfect, even if you're doubting your abilities, just do it anyway. Please just do it anyway. Just sit down and give yourself a chance. Even if it's just for 20 minutes, set a timer and do it anyway. And even if you cringe at the results, just get back on your horse and keep going because I promise you that you will come out the other side eventually and you will just look back at all the things you've learnt and all the things you've achieved and you'll be so, so proud. And another thing I would say is just don't ever strive per for perfection. Don't try and get things right because you won't get them perfect. And I don't want you to get them perfect. I don't want you to make a perfect recording. I want you to make an honest recording. That's going to be so much more interesting, so much more unique, have so much more personality. And this is really about embracing the 21st century through digital recording and distribution technologies. So this is about you stepping into being an independent DIY female musician, imperfectly, just getting things started, learning as you go. And that really is the reality of what that means. It is not some crazy magic process where suddenly some people just know how to do all this stuff and others don't. And it's as black and white as that. You have to learn as you go and you have to give your, yourself the chance to learn. And you should never apologise to anyone for learning and getting started. So anyone that would ever make you feel patronised or overlooked or even humiliated for not knowing everything but giving things a go and getting started, they really don't understand the creative process well enough and they don't understand the recording process well enough and they should not be your barometer of whether this is worth doing or not. So there you have it. If you've ever felt totally overwhelmed by all the techniques and tools there is to master in order to record your own music, this episode was for you, my friend, because inside I shared with you why striving for getting it all right may be exactly where you're going wrong. And if you're listening to this episode as it goes out or before the 30th of November, do not forget about our Girls Swiddling Knobs special competition to mark the launch of the podcast. All you have to do to enter to win that £50 gift voucher to spend on any recording equipment you like is rate and review the podcast. Obviously, subscribe to the podcast first, but rate and review the podcast and then screenshot that and share it on social media, tagging the female DIY musicians. That's on Instagram at femdiymusician. And on Facebook, just type at and then the female DIY musician. And you could be in with a chance for getting some really good upgrades in your home studio. In next week's episode, I'll be taking you behind the scenes of my very own home recording setup so you can get my inside tips of creating your home recording space. You do not want to miss this. OK, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Just one final thing, dear listener. I just wanted to ask what you thought of today's episode. Did you love it? Did it make you feel emotions and stuff? Did it give you a whole new philosophy on the meaning of life? No? Okay, well, fair enough. But if you liked it at all, just share a teeny weeny review wherever you're listening because, number one, my ego likes a massage and, more importantly, two, I can learn what you're loving and want more of. Oh, and three, it'll boost our ranking in the podcast algorithm, meaning more women and girls will hear all this girls twiddling knobs goodness. Triple win. I can't wait to read your review.